Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Do you think you know this world you're in? I've seen things you haven't. You know how it feels to be powerless. To be a pawn in someone else's game. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. There's a member of our cast who was born and raised in Iran and it's really easy like we use drama and television as a form of escapism sometimes but sometimes it's also too important to ground ourselves in the reality of today so whilst we're here celebrating we want to make sure that we're also amplifying the voices of the ladies in Iran and the struggles that they're going through and just to let them know that they are seen and they are supported from afar. Wow what is so fascinating and special about the world of Gangs of London is that it deepens, broadens and goes into those dark, deep veins of uh, the underbelly of this fantasy version of this amazing city that we live in. The history and modernity clash, this bloody bold fantasy. So yeah, I think it's, uh, it is unique in that sense. It's because the show already is a heightened world. It's uh, realistic and gritty, but it's this very kind of heightened, you know, bigger than life world and so Koba, just like the other characters, he's kind of like this larger-than-life character. So I think that that's, that's something that will get people's attention and really kind of get them invested in, in who this guy is and what he's here to accomplish, which is essentially ultimate control and dominance. Yeah, I would say the, the big difference between the two is like the duplicity in the first one, that like, for those of who, who don't know, <laughs> who should know um, the whole undercover police officer aspect to of the first one and the faces that he shows to different people that was really interesting the first time around this time around everyone kind of knows he's been outed by the end of it so everybody knows who he is and what his qualities are but he's in a different struggle now he's struggling with himself he's struggling with his autonomy and um, yeah it was a challenge to play but hopefully I've delivered in some way violence is baked into gangster stories and the question is really how do you do it um, and, and to not make it feel gratuitous. And what drew me to the show was that it didn't feel like that in season one. It felt like those moments of violence that are intrinsic to the power struggles of, you know, crime business um, were just handled in a way that felt really cinematic and elevated. So it was almost the choreography of it, the sort of the sometimes, you know, almost balletic terror and sort of um, elevated genre sort of vibe it had sort of just felt like it was all part of this mad opera and those were like the arias that that were really suspenseful and, and and you could barely watch but they didn't they felt like they were they earned their place because they were grounded in sort of the business of it but were in and of themselves spectacularly sort of compelling well-structured character driven you know action sequences you don't normally see on telly I mean, it's a different world we we we're playing at the moment. So you, you're gonna see, you're gonna see betrayal. You're gonna see a dangerous thing. You're gonna see an amazing thing. You're gonna see a lot of fights. You're gonna see a lot of drama. You're gonna see a lot of blood, 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 and violence, basically. When we end season one, the city has a new ruler now. It's gonna be ruled by Asif and this really mean guy called Koba that you guys will meet, and that is going to mess up the entire structure of of London and and now these gangsters have to kind of like find ways to deal with Koba which is not easy. 
because uh, why? Because it's just much more. It goes much more in depth. The characters. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you got the star talking here. That's a very important person you're going to talk to later on. Uh, some new characters which really, really bring the show live. And then with Soapy, you know, the Elliot. She just he goes through so much. Um, and, and, and the director, Corinne Hardy, has done such a fabulous job. It's been so exciting to, to watch it and to work. I think that they can exp uh, expect to get attached to a lot of characters uh, for different reasons, characters that sometimes don't even deserve empathy, but you know, the actors and the crew really made it possible for us to go deep into whatever psyche that we get to meet with each and every character. So yeah, a lot of uh, emotion. I guess. Especially my character starts on the top of mountains and uh, it's a roller coaster basically. So from the top he's gone down to his own grave. So I can't tell, I can't spoil anymore because you guys are going to see it. Hopefully you're going to love it. Absolutely. I would say that if you enjoyed the action and violence of the first one, you will not be disappointed by the second one. Um, there's a lot of when we approach these scenes, we try to look for nuance, we try to look for what's going to excite people um, and also what moves the story forward, you know. There was a lot of conversation last time about the violence in the series being gratuitous or like celebrating that stuff. But I think that everything that we do is moving the story forward. It's important. It's not a case of just like, oh, we're just going to smash someone's head in for the sake of it. Like if his head gets smashed in, it needed to get smashed in for a reason, you know what I mean? It's such an important to create a storyline, basically. More action is storyline, more telling story about the, all the characters, basically. So, this is so important for Gangs of London. It's about drama, action and blood, blood, a lot of blood. Well, I think, you know, you cannot have a story of power in a big city without people having to raise their hands now and then. But what's beautiful about it is that all of the violence, all of the action comes at a cost. No one ever comes off looking great in this, you know. And I think that is what fans really, really appreciate. And it's, you know, honoring great classical storytelling traditions. The amount of action and drama that it brings all together. I mean, Gangs of London, honestly, is a beast. Uh, it's such, it's really beautifully shot and the cast is incredible. So Koba is a Georgian paramilitary gangster leader, and he's been brought in by the investors and Asif to really get a stronghold on all the gangs after the end of season one, where the killing of Sean Wallace, everything is kind of gone, kind of wild, and Koba's there to really reel everybody in and to, uh, to really have a monopoly on the, on the crime and drug trade in London. And why we should be afraid of him is because he's ruthless beyond any means and uh, he's probably the most powerful thing that we've seen uh, to date on the show. And that says a lot because there's so many powerful characters on this show. I believe that Saba is the character that, uh, that does not want that power that everyone is fighting for. So that really got, uh, it was really interesting to just witness how she would change all over the course of the whole show. and. Uh, why she would make the decision that she was making and uh, yeah, the way she was being used and the way she was understanding that she didn't want that for herself. So yeah, that really excited me to just play the one and only character that did not give a fuck about the whole thing. I can't say fuck, right? I can't? Cool. <laughs> I think we will see a little more of action sequences from Lale, which, is, which I'm really excited about and I had a lot of fun shooting. And I think we will see Lale a little bit more vulnerable at some point, where we will see Lale for the first time letting down her guards. And yeah, let's see what happens then. <laughs> I can't yet, because I'm spoiling it. But working with all these actors, and uh, I can't say it yet, but uh, watch it, watch it. You'll find out. Oh, wow. Well. It was the idea that, uh, you know, he is a man who has got a code of honor and he lives by it. He really, really lives by it at, at the expense of everything. But I, that is what appeals to me the most. He really and truly lives his creed and his code of honor. 
It's depth, you know, it's depth and it's um, variety is the spice of life, but also perspectives, you know. We're really proud to have many different languages and many different skin colors, creeds in the show. And I think we just want to further expand that. We want to celebrate the people who make up the city, this great city that we live in. It's going to get messy. It's going to be, it's going to have a lot of, lot of action as well. And man, what can I say? Like, buckle up and get ready for the unexpected. I think it's gone too deep into the characters. This time, especially, we go deeper and deeper into Asif, Luan, Lale and create their own world of, of, of driving. Bolder, bloodier, badder and sexier. This might not be the answer to your question because it would be more for a future season, but um, there's a character called Saba, played by Jazz Armando, who's introduced into this series, and I think her character is one of the ones I'm most excited about. And I'm definitely interested to see where she goes. It's an amazing cast. I'm so glad to be back with them in a set and here as well. We are a family now. We are not colleagues anymore. <laughs> we are in, in the tradition of all fantastic players. Everybody's a fantastic playmate. Everyone is humble, down to earth, talented. And all of our energy is about the story. And that's what makes it so special. We've had such a fantastic time and long may it continue. Yeah, I mean, if I told you stories, you probably put, wouldn't believe it after you see the show. But we all got along like just beautifully. So there's like videos of us dancing to Barbie Girl and stuff like that. So. Everybody's a dream to work with, incredible people, and, uh, and uh, so yeah, it's, it, was, it, was, it was just really such a joy, utter joy. Corinne, because he's a total um, real and authentic human being, he does so much. The man now is making uh, all these things for Halloween, all these, uh, how do you call them? The, the, the pumpkins, he's, he's so inspired, he's so talented, and he's so real and he directs with his heart, he's a genius. And one of the few directors I know uh, who is such a wonderful human being. Well, because it is a part of a vision and artists must have a vision. Corin has this vision and he's so good at just, uh, you know, displaying it and doing it with people that he believes in. Each and every person he chose to work with is someone that could bring exactly what he wanted for his vision. So. I think it's going to be uh, exactly what the people hoped for, the, the people that had the vision in the first place and the dream, you know? So it's going to look like the people that made it. I was just a fanboy on season one um, and I came on to do season two and so very much came on hoping not to blow it in the first instance and then to make sure that, you know, myself and Corin Hardy, lead director, did something that was a proper continuation of the first season. So, yeah, so we took a lot of time to to construct, especially on the action front and the sort of the, the genre, the sort of elevated genre that these action sequences take, just to plan them properly and make sure they were embedded in the story and the characters and that we hadn't seen it before. And that if we sort of got excited about it and it felt like new and right, then we just hoped that it would work out that everyone else would. I guess human beings can be each and everything. Uh, like we can be cruel, we can be lovable, we can be everything. We just got to discipline ourselves to be whoever it is that we could be uh, on, you know, on, on a positive thing. But getting to understand, I, I understood so much about my own relationships in real life through understanding characters and the way they felt. You know, you get to see your dad by seeing two people talking, you know, and you understand yourself on a deeper level because that's what art does. It enables us to go deeper in places that we fear and places that hurt, you know? Well, I've been working and I'm not very well known yet for 52 years. So I start very, very early. Never in my life have I experienced such a wonderful onset uh, atmosphere. From all the assistants, all the assistants, everybody, it's just one machine which works. And because it's Corinne directing it, at least in my scenes, um, it's a sense of humor, it's the, I don't know, it's just, you know, when you meet somebody and it clicks, with him it just clicks. We did some great location, we did some, even the writing is different this time ago, we got great dramas, man. we got great actions, we got movement, a lot of fun. 
Well, yeah, there's been a the, the sort of that tower coming down at the end of season one caused a power vacuum that the investors have tried to fill with uh, a new sort of enforcer character called Koba, who's bringing a very sort of hardcore sort of Eastern European gangster organization where there's no families, where the families that are in the game in London are fair game. And it's like a really sort of brutal crackdown on what the falling apart of London we witnessed in the first season was. And to sort of illustrate that, we sort of introduced a new sort of Afghan, um, a new sort of uh, Algerian family. Um, and we sort of see it from the bottom up, how, how the new, the change of regime, if you like, in London plays out at street level as well as in the sort of the towers and, and, and the sort of uh, the higher powers, as it were. I am incredibly excited. I think I'm the most excited here because I'm just a kid. <laughs> Because it just stopped, and like we just wanted more. Like as soon as it was the last episode of the se of last season, I needed more straight away, and I didn't get it until now. So like I get to experience it in this type of area as well, and it's just insane. So yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm very happy to be here. More action. Give me all the action. I need all of it. Without doubt. I mean, I think from the f when I first saw the first season, I thought these characters can run and run. You know, they're gonna they're gonna swap in and swap out bad things are going to happen but um, it just feels like the DNA of the show has been established now and you know I think it can run and run. It's important that the story has always progressed for me because I think if we end up, end up going around in circles it won't be fulfilling for us as creatives as actors you know the stories that we want to tell um, so I just want to see like this you know what I'll tell the producers what I want to see you know. <laughs> Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. You understand what it took to build this city. And you know the pain of losing it. London belongs to us. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.